Good Wednesday morning. I'm NTV Chief Meteorologist Eddie Shear. Now about 11.15 actually on our Wednesday, Newfoundland Daylight Time. Wanted to talk about Hurricane Doran and the potential impacts across Newfoundland, Labrador, and even the Maritimes as we go into the weekend. Still some uncertainty in the forecast, but things are beginning to look a little bit more clear. This is your weather vlog for Hurricane Dorian. We're going to talk about a few things here. The stats, the forecast, ensemble slash spaghetti plots, and why there is so much uncertainty. Here is Hurricane Dorian right now on the satellite picture. You can see the swirl there is still looking like a formidable storm. Winds around the center, 165 kilometers per hour makes it a Category 2. Moving north now, 13 kilometers per hour. So good news there. At least it's moving finally. And the pressure is 964 millibars around the center. Keep in mind the strongest winds are located around the center, a few hundred kilometers away from the coast of Florida or Georgia or South Carolina. But the tropical storm to hurricane force winds and wind gusts extend well away from the center, as do the heaviest rains and the storm surge threat. So even though the heaviest and highest winds are offshore, we are seeing some pretty significant impacts along the coast of Florida right now, now getting into Georgia, working into South Carolina, and eventually North Carolina as the storm will begin to make a north and eventually northeastward turn as we go into early Friday morning, winding up off the coast of North Carolina, it looks like during the day on Friday, and then beginning to accelerate toward Atlantic Canada as we go into Saturday, Saturday night, and Sunday, and eventually passing Newfoundland as a post-tropical storm by Monday. Good chance that as this approaches our area, as we go into Saturday night and Sunday, it is still a hurricane, Category 1 storm. Winds around the center could be as much as 120, 130 kilometers per hour. And some areas on land may see winds gusting that high as well as we head through Saturday night and Sunday in conjunction with very heavy rainfall. The question is where is the rainfall going to be heaviest and which area is going to see the highest winds? Well, keep in mind, Anywhere inside this cone here, the storm could track, but we are beginning to see some trends that it's likely going to be down the center line or toward the western side of that track. If that happens, more than likely Nova Scotia would take the brunt of the storm, with Newfoundland getting more of a glancing blow. But again, still lots of time to work out the details and still lots of time for the forecast to change. And you might say to yourself, Eddie, how do you know that? Well, here are the spaghetti plots, and as you can see, the lines down here, very close together, closer to the forecast start time. There should be more agreement. As we go farther north, the lines spread apart. We're farther out in the forecast period, so that's where we start to see that uncertainty showing up. But as we take a close look across Atlantic Canada, we can see a lot of those lines over western Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, very few across eastern Newfoundland and east of the island or west of the island or west of Nova Scotia meaning it looks like Nova Scotia potentially could see a landfall from Dorian as it makes its way up towards our direction or southern Newfoundland or a combination of both. As of now, still early to say, and we could see these forecast lines trend westward or eastward over the coming days. It's all basically going to depend on a couple of things, but the biggest thing is going to be how Dorian interacts with a trough swinging out of northern Canada. As you can see here, there's Dorian's energy interacting with that trough which pulls Dorian to the west. If Dorian speeds up or slows down, it's going to change the time at which it interacts with this energy dropping out of northern Canada, which would steer the storm a little farther west or a little farther east. Again, this could change over the coming days, but we're starting to see things beginning to kind of fall into place a little bit more. As far as the wind field goes, when can we expect to see tropical storm force winds? Well, across the Maritimes, looks, looks like Saturday evening, and across Newfoundland, Saturday night. What about 50 knot winds or tropical storm force wind probabilities rather? So what are the chances that we see tropical storm force winds? Well, let's actually, I want to scoot this up north a little bit so you can see that. Uh, so what are, we are going to see is we basically have a, a 50 to 70% chance across most of Newfoundland of seeing tropical storm force winds, which is about uh, 70 or 80 kilometers per hour, somewhere in that range. Uh, the probability is a little bit higher down toward the coast of uh, southwestern and western Nova Scotia. Uh, what about 50 knot winds, which is 92 kilometer an hour winds or wind gusts? And the best chance of that happening is, uh, is again, down across Nova Scotia in southern Newfoundland and then portions of central Newfoundland. But the greatest risk, 80 plus percent, is still remaining offshore. So while there is a good chance 
greater than 40 50 percent for many areas of seeing winds gusting over 90 it's not a hundred percent chance and it's nothing we haven't seen before we've seen winds gusting to 90 100 kilometers per hour the question is are we going to see any of those hurricane force gusts 130 140 and as of right now that's the big question mark it's possible and if we get that farther west track like i was mentioning by looking at this graphic here those high winds would likely be found across potentially southern newfoundland in the southwest and parts of nova scotia highest winds as storms get up into our region are going to be on the eastern side of the track so wherever the track is those strong winds are going to be on the eastern side of the track so still some details to work out heaviest rainfall going to be north and west of the track and as of right now the track is looking more or less towards nova scotia rather than newfoundland which means southern newfoundland yes could see 50 60 mils of rain but the really high rainfall amounts like we saw with igor greater than 100 millimeters of rain look like right now that may be over nova scotia but again the caveat is that could change with the forecast track if the track looks farther east then we start to move this heavy rain band farther to the east as well Tro uh, canadian hurricane center has issued a tropical cyclone statement for newfoundland and southern labrador basically stating that we could be impacted by dorian as i was just talking about over the weekend it's nothing more than that it's not a warning it's not a watch it's just a statement giving you a heads up nothing to get overly alarmed about so in concluding uncertainty remains but some details are getting clearer heavy rain high winds and big waves are likely for some areas again where but likely southern newfoundland and portions of nova scotia to see the highest waves and the strongest winds at the moment that could change it's only wednesday Again, will Nova Scotia or Newfoundland take the brunt of the storm? Still not certain. And as always, forecast updates are certainly to come as we get closer to the weekend. So I hope you found this video informative. Um, I got to get to work shortly here, and I'll have the latest forecast for you, as always, coming up on NTV, starting at 5.30 on first edition, and then the evening news hour between 6 and 7. Have a great Wednesday, and I'll talk to you later.